Hello guys, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we're going to discuss about transplanting. Before starting, I would like to remind you about the three previous episodes because this is a continuation of those three previous episodes. The first episode, we discussed about important tips about nursery. How you can establish your seedlings from nursery with using a variable material. The second episode was discussing about the bushland and the farmland and what make it different and what is important for investors if you want to buy a farm and what tips you should consider to buy the farmland and also help you to cut or reduce unnecessary cost buying bushland instead of farmland. So if you are interested with that episode, it was the second episode, so you can take a look and there is a lot to learn from that episode. And in the third episode, we discussed about important tips about land preparation. We discussed what we should do with our soil, how we can amend our soil, how we can improve because land preparation is the key for your production so that if you consider those three episodes, you can realize now we are going to the stage that we already have the farm, that the farm is ready, we need to start transplanting. The aim of this episode is at the end that every farmer can establish their own farm just by following this free agriculture education episode. So that by transplanting, what you need, you need to water your place where you're going to transplant. For me, I prefer double drip layer of irrigation, but this it depends the capacity of the farmer financial. But if you have two drip irrigation, this is the best way to go. So first you need to watering. So you water first and in watering, you can mix with trichodemas, which help to sterilize the soil. After watering, so this wetness you can see because it's drip, so the soil is wet enough so that you can transplant. And while you're holding your tray, make sure your tray is never touched down. So this is important tip to consider while you are transplanting. And also make sure you are using the plant density or plant spacing, the right plant spacing. So if it's 50 centimeter apart or if it's 60 centimeter apart depend where you can grow so this is for the people who are using the replication when it comes to the people who are using faro you need to create or dig the hole on top of your ridge like this one and uh, so that dug you can put water so that the plant roots the root zone of the you are seedling can be somewhere but not like on the center where you put the water so you can see like these two seed rings they are like left and right but in the center there is water so that water will go direct to the root zone of your plant so this is for the people who are growing in it using the furrow irrigation or flooding method and this you should uh, prefer to use the bush type variety of your seeding especially when you're growing your tomato because uh, most of the bush variety they can withstand this moisture or wetness without having a lot of problem because the most problem facing a vegetable or growers are the fungal disease there is bacterial disease and there is viral disease but this is a very rare 90 percent of the disease are caused by fungal and the fungal you know they prefer wetness so that's very important for you buyers when you're going to buy the seeds make sure the seedling they have like some try or you saw the from the demo that they are performing well in a moist condition when you are using this farrow irrigation because most of farmer they cannot afford but for those who can afford you should use drip irrigation because it will save you not only the cost but also it will double your production and also staking with this kind of 
faro irrigation is quite different with the one using drip you can stake this with drip but this is for bushy type variety that you stake after one me after four meters you stake one stick so me i'm the very big fan of double drip layer irrigation what i love from drip irrigation first you can use uh, this zigzag uh, plant spacing like the space we have 60 centimeter apart but you can use this 30 centimeter apart like planting like in a triangular form so you can have many plants in one ridge and also you can also transplant very young seedling and which it will help also to uh, adapt well with your soil once it will adapt well and the growth of this seedling it will be magic and one thing you should consider is the irrigation and also pesticide application it's very important to use preventive fungicide especially this kind there is different fungicide you can get in the market but you can have interval of two weeks after every two weeks you you spray preventive pesticide only once you figure the there is a certain kind of fungal disease or bacteria at the time you can change your spray or whenever you can spot the, the insects because you can put some traps there yellow trap for this aphid white fry and also you can put the yellow sticker which it also help the i mean the blue sticker which it will help you to capture some uh, thrips so that's it you can use any irrigation so drip is everything guys if you can have capacity to buy drip buy this one with a good library like this one uh, like dropping water per second so like this one is very very also important to consider just not every drip there are some drip are better than the others so it's very important to consider this while you want to install your drip irrigation and with the most of areas in tanzania because the drought and the nature of the soil if you have double drip layer of irrigation you will see the change but if you can't at least you can use a single line but single line you should you use less plant so that the water that you will be watering it can be like the plant they can take the water and the nutrients from its root zone so if you have one drip line use one line of food tomato and you can maximize that by using different training technique or like staking material like this one this one we're planting in open feed but it have all characteristic like greenhouse and also weeding when it when it rain so you can weed it when the soil is moist so avoid the hand weeding like with hand hole because it can cause some physical damage in the training the we when you use like two line of um, tomato there is many ways that you can utilize with this technique of training it's like a greenhouse you use a diagonal diagonal means like the the you tie the string from the top down to the plant and the interchangeable so if this the the, the first string faces the right direction the another string will come in the opposite opposite direction maybe this one it can be another topic for another day but staking there is different staking material we do different staking material because once you stake you give the good ventilation and also it helps to space this one because you are using double line you see if you're using double line it's very because every plant need to have sufficient amount of sunlight to create enough food for fruit if it's what you intend to harvest for especially when you are growing tomato and other fruity vegetable so this is very very important there is also a technique you can use like um, uh, tomato creeping which will help you to hold the plant but also you can use like this one this is for bush variety bush variety is a type of bush the tomato that they 
they don't need much pruning because once you prune you give less opportunity for your plant to have more fruit but in this kind of tomato you are seeing now this is a type like determinate indeterminate bright so pruning is very important for this because this kind of tomato they grow tall like five feet tall because it depends on your training that you have so if you have bush variety avoid trade uh, avoid pruning but you can do some maneuvering while you are doing a uh, training or oh, with this use you see this pause or oh, post or oh, this stick you are seeing in the center but with this in a determinate variety pruning is key if you don't prune you will have a lot of problem like uh, also you can harbor some insects and also some fungal disease and also you can create shade which is not good for your plant to make their own food and the plant to defend itself but with this bush variety it's very very important to know how you can train so that for this to avoid too much pruning you need to interchange these branches you can prune only when there is necessary but this one doesn't need to prune once you prune you reduce your production so it's very important if you want to grow to differentiate this not taking every practice to apply so for this bush variety pruning uh, once you prune too much you, you you have less fruits you can have better uh, fruit quite but you know with pruning you re reduce the you re sacrifice a lot of weed so it's important to know this thing because some farmer they used to see some greenhouse tomato or indeterminate tomato farmers they prune but this once you prune guys you lose a lot of fruit so don't sacrifice a lot of fruit for this type of food bushy right and you can see this is a farrow that's why i say farrow is good for this kind of uh, tomato and also you should know like which variety is resistant to this fungal disease and or which tomato can be adaptable to your area there is many demonstration that they show these sellers they they sell their product so you should understand this one thing i like about it, this indeterminate this one we grow like in a greenhouse but this guys here mr ite johanna in the dodoma grow in open feed you can see the this one the design is everything like in a greenhouse but it is in open feed but also we insist to put the ridge because because it is open when once it rains the water will accumulate here so to avoid your root suffocation and a more fungal disease guys it's very important to have raised bed like you saw in the soil preparation and you can see this training i was telling the stream it is like weaving it is like diagonal like it, when you look far like it's like x so one string go in another direction another string in another direction you can see there is kind of yellow sticker which help us to identify some insect because we usually do spray after every two weeks preventive uh, fungicide mostly but once you spot insect you spray a certain insecticide once you spray a certain fungal disease you change also the chemical that you are using especially this kind of fungal disease they are some of very resistant so you cannot spray the same uh, a, a pe like pesticide for after three times so you need also to have some different active ingredient of the a certain fungicide or a certain pesticide to interchange so to avoid this resistance so this is different technique that you can do in if fertilization you should have your own program there is different way that you can use also you can use some booster like tecamine to boost your flower so there is also other technology like there is different boosters there is also different kind of fertilizer depend that kind of fertilizer you have like you can have this kind of bio macro crops it's one of the good fertilizer with a good balanced npk that you can apply in your in your tomato 
feed also you can know like what time when it's vegetation it need nitrogen when it's root formation it need phosphorus when it's like flowering here or fruit formation you need a lot of food potassium which you can use potassium and also some booster like it take them into boost it to make more flower and also not forget to add calcium so this guys it's have been it for you for today so that i believe you can start your nursery and uh, grow your tomato with this kind of helpful video thank you for watching guys see you in another episode bye